ideal world, and it's not. <laughs> um, especially on the northern, especially on the older ones, the bonding system, the AC ground system, and the DC negative system should all be connected together. They should be connected in one spot. Exactly. It's virtually impossible to have that happen, unfortunately. And and the, and the more places that you have connections, the more problems you have. And that spot should be the zinc? Or well, zinc? that spot, it doesn't it doesn't matter as long as there's just one spot. And normally... Oh, one. So that. on a Northern Lights generator, <clears throat> you have a DC negative block, right? There's a DC negative wire, black case connection oh. to the block on a, on a generator. Right. And... And oftentimes you'll find that there's a ground <coughs> wire on there as well, bonding wire, and, a, and an AC ground wire. It's an AC ground wire because it's a, it delivers AC you know, power right. to the panel and you right. need to ground it. So I think in an ideal world, that would be the place. So when you're seeing electrolysis on a boat, then it's a bonding issue, either the AC if you're it's seeing not. electrolysis on a boat, then it like could be sabi. it could be a number of different. Yeah, of course, it could be on chemo sabi. It was probably another vessel. Though. Quite possibly another boat because of what we were looking at, and it was quite possibly that that boat was parked between two boats. One that had a problem, one that was receptive to that problem, and the power was running straight through the boat and, right. and back to the dock. But yeah. usually, usually. I don't think there is a it, usually, but... <laughs> it, would it be something like, say, the ground for the AC is not grounded to the, the uh, negative... If you... <clears throat> what I of, often look for, if I think that it's a problem on the boat, uh -huh. then I'm looking for multiple points of connection between the bonding system and the, and the DC negative. Right? And you just want one. I want one. And the one. reason is... That if you have multiple connections, and it's difficult to explain this without a drawing, but if you have multiple connections between DC negative and the bonding system, uh -huh. right, then your charge sources, alternator, battery charger, will charge the batteries through the bonding system. So in other words, the negative on the batteries, you wouldn't want the negative grounding onto your engine, you want that going to a bot, uh, some kind of terminal, and then grounding to your engine. That's how it should be. Well, ideally, the engine should not. If if it if the boat's built well and people have thought this through and designed well, then that the engine would be a an isolated ground engine. Right? There would be no ground on the engine. There would be no ground on the case of the alternator. And this is a problem that we see on on a lot of these boats. <clears throat> I think that they're on top of it now, but a lot of the boats that we'll be dealing with, if you go back to the alternator um, and look and see that there's a negative ground wire on the case of the alternator, right, then that spells trouble. It's a very complicated subject, and we could talk about it for hours, but, and the reason is because it's not just wires. Um, there's there's hydraulic, cable, hydraulic hoses involved, too. And what a lot of people don't realize, and even the experts, um, and I discovered this a long time ago, um, you know, if you have this situation where you've got a ground wire on the alternator, right, and the ground wire is on the block of the engine too, so that the alternator is grounded to the engine and is charging possibly through the engine, if you put a green wire, a bonding wire, on the engine, and then run it back to all the through holes, and they're connected also to the bonding on the generator, and that's connected to a black wire that goes back to the batteries. I know it sounds complicated, but technically, when you start that alternator on the main engine, some of the current is right. going to go through the block of the main engine, down the green bonding wire, through the through holes, any place it possibly can go to get back to the battery negative. It's going to charge through the bonding system. If you give electri electricity a path to travel, some of it will go that route. Now, 
if that root that we're talking about, that alternate root, if the resistance is the same as the resistance in the black wire, then half will go down one way and half will go down the other. It doesn't work that way because the resistance in the bonding system is going to be more because the wires are smaller, there's going to be some corrosion down there, um, and the black wire is a straight path to the batteries. But there's enough going through the bonding system to cause problems. Now, think about this. The stabilizers have bonding wires on them, right? Generally, if you look at a stabilizer actuator plate, it's got a green wire on it. And that green wire goes where? To the bonding system. The stabilizer actuator is made of steel, and it has hydraulic hoses attached to it, right? And the hydraulic hose has a metal end. And inside the hydraulic hose, it has a steel wire reinforcement that oftentimes makes contact with that, con with that steel end. And the other end of that might be connected to an aluminum block, a, 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 a hydraulic distribution block conducts. That, in turn, is connected to, let's say it goes to another block and then to the pump on the engine, the engine is grounded to the alternator. So if you take a clamp meter when you're running and the batteries are charging and you clamp the hydraulic hose, believe it or not, Wow. A lot of the time you're going to find that it's flowing current mm. right back to the actuator, down the bonding wire into the bonding system. Because of the metal reinforcing wire around Yep. Wow. And I just was playing around in an engine room one day and I'm thinking, damn, I was, lo I was losing current, right? Because I measured the positive wire, right? And, and if you've got a balanced system and no power is escaping, and you're charging 100 amps out of the alternator and you clamp the red wire and you see 100 amps, right? Mm -hmm. If you clamp the black wire, you should see 100 amps also. If you oh, see 100 sure. amps on the red wire and you only see 95 on the, on the black wire, <laughs> you're losing 5 amps. Right. So we've seen that quite often. So you can go find it with the clamp meter and that's what I was doing. I'm going around the engine, like, where the hell is this 5 amps going? And I found it, well it wasn't five, I think it was more than that, but I found some of it on a ground wire, you know. I found some of it on the hydraulic lines. And the problem is when you create loops, we call them loops, because there are different paths back to the batteries. And then um, you, you introduce the through holes. And now you've introduced the seawater, because seawater conducts, salt conducts and you introduce the paint. Paint has copper in it, right? And copper conducts. And that's where we run into these issues where you get halo halo halloing around the through holes in extreme conditions.